moshe mokowo o se bi moshe mesegbe le mi ta mi si o e mi moshe ko father we give you all the praise we thank you for your protection we thank you for your provision we thank you for all you do you are mighty you are wonderful you are greater than the greatest Worship the Lord of hosts, the ancient of days. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Are we ready to dance in the presence of the Most High God? He has been so faithful to us. He has been so kind to us. So we are here to just praise Him. Just give Him all the thanks, all the adoration. Praising the Lord of oh my soul, the Caesar day he has made. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Praising the Lord, praising the Lord. Say Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Talking that makes me 
come into your presence. Hey, hallelujah. There is something, 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 there is one thing, there is two things, there is something that makes me come into your presence. My help, 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 my
Awesome God. Awesome God. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. Awesome God. Awesome God. We give you praise. We give you praise. We adore you. We adore you. in charge of zone one, Pastor Mui Wakao, to please lead us in the opening prayer. You're welcome, sir. Amen. Amen. Shall we pray? Our most high God, we just want to reference your presence in our midst. We say thank you for moments like these. Thank you, Lord, because you have built so much. And we return all glory to you, Lord. That we slept and we woke up even to gather together this morning is by your grace. Father, we return this glory to you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, even for still making us to stand in you, Lord. Daddy, the enemy has not taken us out of the fold. It is still by your grace 
we return the glory to you, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we are gathered together concerning this program of the counselors, the convention of the counselors. Ancient of days, indeed you are the master teacher. Come and have your way. Come and have your way. Be the teacher indeed. Everything we will learn today, Lord. Father, let them come from the throne of grace in the name of Jesus. Our Father and our God, we ask, O oh Lord, that you touch the tongue of all those that will minister today. Let them not minister by the flesh. Let them minister by thy spirit. Make today a memorable day and let your name alone be glorified. Father, we thank you. Because by the time we round up this program, we have every cause to return all the glory to you. Thank you, ancient of days. Even as we declare this program opened in the name of the Father, Amen. and of the Son, Amen. and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Please let's be seated uh, briefly. We'd like to welcome our fathers in the house this morning. First, I'd like to welcome the assistant pastor in charge of Lagos Province 64, admin. Please join me to welcome Pastor Kola Balogun and his darling wife. How do you are welcome, sir? We also have in our midst this morning one of our fathers in the province, the church growth officer. Please join me to welcome Pastor Samuel Adelai. Daddy, good morning, sir. You're welcome. Distinguished daddies and mommies in the house, we all welcome to the um, convention of uh, counselors in Lagos Province 64. Without much ado now, we'll all rise, even as we sing the RCCG in 379. In 379, stand up, stand up for Jesus, as the HMP choir will be leading us. After the hymn, we'll be taking the RCCG anthem immediately. Thank you. 
as soldiers of Christ, shall we take the redeemed anthem together. seats even as we welcome, even as we welcome the provincial coordinator for counseling in Lagos province 64 assistant pastor mrs margaret olajide let's welcome her to the microphone god bless you Let somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. All and maybe cancel us rise up and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good morning to my mommies and daddies and all counselors that are here by presence. Welcome address by the provincial coordinator. You are all welcome to this glorious 2021 counseling conference of Lagos Prophet 64 a.k.a. the province of ceaseless praise. We give glory to God our maker, who in his infinite mercy keep us alive to see yet another conference, despite all that transpired in the year 2020. COVID-19 caused a lot of harm in some nations of the world. In our country, the NSAS menace is there and its end results. Insecurity, kidnapping, abduction, etc. But all this, we are kept safe. May his name be praised forever. Shout hallelujah. hallelujah. My heartfelt gratitude goes to our own daddy and mommy, pastor and pastor, Mrs. Maduka, the, provincial, the pastor in charge of Province 64, the national executive, the API CPs, and our mommy's presence, Pastors in charge of zones, areas, and parishes, Lagos Prophet 64. Lagos Prophet 64 coordinators and all counselors here in presence. The chosen team for this year's conference is counseling on to higher heights. We suggest taking Christian counseling from the present level to a higher level, especially in this area of a new normal. May we be able to affect our counseling positively in times of their life challenges and prayerfully support them to reach greater heights in Jesus' name. Let me humbly welcome our resource persons, Pastor B.A. Ajayoba, the PICP, Lagos Province 53, and the National 
coordinator of counseling department of Redeemed Christian Church of God. Mrs. Deborah Onishile, a psychologist in Redeemers University, Eden, and Pastor Dr. Kayo Diodesoya from Family Conference Prayer Mission Lagos. I therefore admonish everyone to pay rapt attention to every details of this conference. Don't allow yourself to be attracted or distracted by anything or anybody whatsoever. I want to believe this is annual conference we will never forget in a hurry. At this juncture, I would like to thank my able assistants and conference committee members, ably led by Dickiness Mureniki Olabisi, for a job well done. It is my prayer that the good Lord will richly bless all of you and replenish you the more in Jesus' name. Finally, I appreciate all Zona, areas, and parish coordinators for your support. May you all be blessed in Jesus' name. AP Olajide Margaret Onushola, Provincial Coordinator, Cancer Department, Lagos Province 64. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ma. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, as Mommy highlighted in our welcome address, we have two of our guest speakers already seated. Uh, please join me to recognize and to welcome Dr. Kayo de Odesoya from Family Covenant Prayer Mission, Lagos. So you're welcome, sir. Hallelujah. You're welcome. Also, all the way from Ede, we have in our miss, uh, as mommy has introduced her in our speech, a psychologist will be speaking to us today on emotional wellness. Please join me to welcome Mrs. Deborah Onishile. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Uh, without much ado, uh, we'll be skipping the keynote address to be given to us by our daddy and move straight away to intercessory prayers. So I'd like to welcome to the microphone to pray for the nation, our dear pastor, the APICP admin, Pastor Kola Balogu. Praise the Lord. I don't think we need to be as cold as this. Counselors should be sharp. Counselors should be apt. They should be calculative and be ready to release godly counsel. If there are counselors like that in the house, rise to your feet and shout hallelujah. The Bible says that where there is no counsel, people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 14. In the book of Genesis, I mean, Exodus chapter 18, verse 19, Exodus 18, 19, the Bible says that Jethro told Moses, I need to give you counsel so that you will not fail. So that these people that the Lord has destined for higher height may get there. I pray for you, even as counselors in this province and in the entire OY world, you will receive the counsel of the Lord in the name of Jesus. Wave your hands unto him and say, thank you, Jesus, for this convention. Thank you for the safety. Thank you for the protection. Thank you for the provision. Thank you for the promotion. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Go ahead and just say, thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus. King of glory, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. In Jesus' mighty name, we've given thanks. If you are shouting amen, shout amen. The Bible says we should pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Psalm 1 to 2 verse 6. He said, dear you have peace. You cry to him and say, my father, my father. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for keeping Nigeria till date. Open your mouth and go ahead and say thank you, Jesus. 
Thank you, Lord, for keeping Nigeria. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for Nigeria. Thank you for the nation Nigeria. Thank you because you don't, you've never allowed the enemies to triumph over Nigeria. Lord, we appreciate you. We bless your name. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Cry to him and say, my father, my father. Let every evil perpetrators in Nigeria be silenced forever. Open your mouth and cry to God. Every evil perpetrator in Nigeria, everyone that have decided that Nigeria should be destroyed, let them be silenced forever. Silence them forever. Silence them forever. Silence them forever. Silence them forever. In Jesus mighty name we pray in the book of psalm psalm 51 verse 18 psalm 51 verse 18 is talking about doing the good pleasure when you are talking of the fact that nigeria is not good nigeria is not good what is your contribution we are going to pray for ourselves as nigeria the grace to do can we really say do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion, unto Nigeria. Build thou the walls of Nigeria. You will cry to him and say, my father, my father, the grace to do good, the grace to do my bitch, to make Nigeria what you have made her to be, release unto me. As a Nigerian, release unto me. Release unto me. Cry to him. Release unto me, Lord. Release unto me, Lord. Release unto me, Lord. Release unto me. The grace to do good. The grace to do my be. Even as a Nigeria. In order to make Nigeria to be what you have made her to be. To be what you have prepared her for. Lord, give me the grace to do. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. For I'm making the people of power. And I'm building the people of praise. We will move through this land by my spirit. And we glorify my precious name. Build your nation. Make us strong, Lord. Join our hearts, Lord. We the song, make us one, Lord, in your body, in the kingdom of your son. Cry to him and say, my father, my father, make us one. In this nation, make us one. Build us up yourself. Cry to him, build us up yourself. Build us up yourself in the name of Jesus. Make us one. 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 Make us one in the name of Jesus. Build us. Build us up. Build us up in Jesus' mighty name. We pray. Amen. If you are shouting, Amen, shout, Amen. amen. You will cry to Him and say, Oh Lord, my Father. You are the solution provider. Provide the necessary solution for us in this country. Cry to him, cry to him, cry to him. Provide us or provide for us, Lord, the necessary solution. We cannot help ourselves. It's only you that can help us. The necessary solution. Provide for us. In the name of Jesus, we need your solution. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. We are going to pray concerning the forthcoming election that the Lord God himself will glorify himself. That the right person will be enthroned, will be elected. Cry to him and say, my father, my father. Concerning the forthcoming election in Nigeria... Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. 
We don't want bloodshed. We don't want problems. We don't want calamities. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. Glorify yourself. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Finally, you will cry to him. As many that will not be interested in the peace of Nigeria, if they refuse to repent, let the health open up and swallow them. Sir, Ma, it is scriptural. Numbers chapter 16. Data, Koran, and Abiram. They were not interested in the peace of the Israelites. They were causing problems. These are, they, I mean, there were differences, disintegration in the camp. And the Lord caused the earth to open up and swallow them. And they begin to move forward. You better pray. You need it. Cry to him and say, my father, my father. As many that will not be interested in the peace of Nigeria. If they refuse to repent, let the earth open up and swallow them. Open your mouth and cry to God. In the name of Jesus, as many that will not be interested in the peace of Nigeria, if they refuse to repent, Lord God of heaven, let the earth open up and swallow them. Let the earth open up and swallow them. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you. We bless you for the nation Nigeria. We worship you for what you have been doing. We worship you for what you will yet do. Accept our praise and worship in the name of Jesus Christ. That we pray that as many that will not be interested in the peace of Nigeria and will refuse to repent, that the earth will open up and swallow them in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, you will help us. You are the solution provider. Provide the needed solution for us in this country. In the name of Jesus Christ. That they will pray for our leaders. Please help them. Help them to take the right decisions and the right time. In the name of Jesus Christ. Everything that is hindering the glory of Nigeria from manifesting as you have destined it to be. Lord, let your fire completely consume such in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord. And let your name forever be glorified in this country. Unite us together. Make us one. Do what only you can do in the name of Jesus. As we continue with this program, you will continue with us. You will glorify your name. You will bless us all. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Still in the attitude of prayer, let's not be tired. Uh, our pastor in charge of Zone 1, Pastor Muiwako, will be leading us in prayer for the church. Shall we rise, please? Amen. Can I have a little time? Amen. The Lord has been faithful. As we go into these prayers, I, if you agree with me, let your amen be very loud with assurance. That it is done. Amen. Our Father, our Most High God, how can we thank you enough? Because you are the pillar. Lord, because you live, we can always face tomorrow. The reason why the church is still standing today it's because you live, Lord Jesus. Father, we return our glory to you. 
accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we thank you for life in the church. We thank you for victory in the church. We thank you for provisions in the church. We thank you, even Father, for being the very present help in trouble. Ancient of days, how can we thank you enough? Our source, our strength, our hope, our joy, our life, our God. We return our glory to you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. My Father, my God, we pray concerning the church. And indeed you said the gate of hell shall not prevail against your church. Every counsel by the Antichrist to pull down your church, my Father, my God, God, by reason of the fact that you have spoken that the gate of hell shall not prevail, we hereby nullify such counsels in the name of Jesus. We pronounce in this hour every counsel of the Antichrist saying, Ha, Christianity will be a thing of the past. Father, today. We stand upon your altar. And daddy, we make a decree that those counselors, those who are counseling together, deliberating together concerning this, Father, let madness be thrown into their midst in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, let them be confused in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, I pronounce that in the church, Father, things will be happening that even the unbelievers will know that indeed we serve a living God. Father, let it be in the name of Jesus. Ancient of days, we pray, Lord, even concerning the church, every fire on the altar that is dying out, that has died already. <laughs> my Father, my God, we pronounce this day, because you have told us to enter boldly even into the throne of grace. And we shall obtain mercy. And daddy, that we shall also receive grace. Daddy, the mercy and the grace today. Father, by virtue of the mercy and the grace, O oh Lord, we pronounce revival unto the fire on the altar in the name of Jesus. Let the fire on the altars be revived. Let the fires on the altar be revived. Let the fires on the altar be revived in the name of Jesus. Every false prophet, every minister claiming to be minister and yet they have their hidden agenda just to make money by virtue of ministrations and bringing down the dignity of the church Ancient of days, we ask, O oh Lord. Father, pull them out in the name of Jesus. Pull them out in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, we pray, Lord, even for the elders. Daddy, bestow upon our elders in the church that anointing for longevity. Daddy, let them live long. Let the elders live long. Let the elders live long. In the name of Jesus. Father, there are lots of things that the elders need to even pass on to the youth. Ancient of days we pray. Even as you grant them that grace for longevity. Father, let them be able to pass the good things to the youth in the name of Jesus. Good things that the youth will inherit from them. Daddy, let them be able to pass to them in the name of Jesus. We also pray for the youth. My Father, my God, we pray, O oh Lord, that this youth, they will serve you. Lord, they will know you. Daddy, they will not fall astray. Father, they will not be misled. They will not be misled in the name of Jesus. In this race, O oh Lord, they will finish well. In the mighty name of Jesus. Even as the youth will be taking over the church tomorrow, my Father, my God, Father, keep them strong in you in the name of Jesus. Let them not be weak. 
Let them not be weary. In the name of Jesus. I also pray, Lord, against the spirit of fear that is ravaging the church because of all the things that are happening around. Father, did you not say that you have not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind? Ancient of days, I hereby pronounce every spirit of fear. We say, lose your grip from the church in the name of Jesus. My Father, my God, you said we have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. My Father, my God, in the church, let that boldness, wherein we can always cry, Abba, Father, Daddy, come upon your church in the name of Jesus. Ancient of days, we ask, O oh Lord, the great and mighty things that you have done in the days of old. Father, let them continue even in greater form in the name of Jesus. Did you not say in your word that greater works shall we, we shall do? Father, we pray that the greater works than that which you have done, Daddy, let them begin to happen in this our own generation in the name of Jesus. Every evil counsel of the devil to bring down the church by shutting down the power of the anointing from moving in the sanctuary by virtue of sin. Ancient of days, we nullify those cancers in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Nigeria indeed will be great. And the church will be great. And the church will be great. Because Nigeria belongs to you. And therefore the church will stand. And no gate of hell will prevail. Thank you, my Father. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Choir, you are not happy me. to joy in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Please be seated briefly. I said briefly. You know, one of the powers that God has given us that many of us may not be aware of is the power of praise. You may need to ask King Jehoshaphat when he went to battle. He looked back, looked at the number of soldiers that he was going with. But the Lord did something that was strange in the business of warfare. He said, no, let the choristers be at the front. Let them sing praises to my name. And right there, even before their eyes, God performed great works, turning their enemies against one another. This morning... Because daddy has charged us earlier that we are counselors and we should not be cold. So the choir will be leading us in 10 minutes of high praise as we lift up our voices. Thank this God who is performing wonders in our lives. Over to you, Corey. Hallelujah. Somebody rise up on your feet and shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are talking about the greatness of our God. It's greater than sicknesses. It's greater than diseases. It's greater than the power of darkness. He's our light in the dark world that we are. Hey! <laughs> I'm 
Opelori Ebi, Opelori Ise, Opelori Jai Hose, Opelori Nigeria, Opelori Jijen Mimu, Opelori Alapia, Opelori Emiti Mommi, Olonu Amonu, Abi Amon Toto, Abi Amon Odiyonu, Oramo Nise Bamo Se, Momo Pe Wamo Mu Iwa Oluwa,
Bless you all. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Now it's getting warmer to the glory of the Lord. I'd like to quickly recognize um, in our presence this morning um, the wife of the pastor in charge of Zone 5, uh, Pastor Mrs. Caroline Arogundade. You're welcome, ma. The Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Oh. We also have in our midst, I'm sorry about that, the wife of the pastor in charge of Zone 1, Pastor Mrs. Adeola Akon. Oh, mommy, you are welcome. God bless you, ma. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We are moving forward in the name of Jesus. Um, we'll be having an adjustment in the program this morning. So right now, we'd like to call to the microphone to speak to us on child sexual abuse, a silent epidemic that is ravaging the world and even our society today. So please join me as a welcome to the microphone uh, from Family Covenant Prayer Mission, Lagos, Dr. Kayode Odessoya. I want to believe that we are clapping to exalt the King of Kings. The Lord of Lords, the beginning and the ending. The I am that I am. The Lord that changes not. The keeper of our lives. Our provider, our defender, our healer, our counselor. Amen. We are going to sing this song together to worship and to praise the I am that I am, the Lord God of Israel, the God that is reigning in this mission. You are the mighty. 
mighty God, the great I am. Alleluia, Alleluia, you are the man. I can hear your voice loud and clear. Ah, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You are the mighty God. Thank you, King of Glory. You are the one preserving our lives. The counselor to counsel us. King over the kings. The ruler of the universe. Thank you for how far you have helped us in this year. Thank you, you never let us fail you. Thank you for this great nation, Nigeria. Thank you for redeemed Christian Church of God all over the world. Thank you for your son and your daughter, Daddy and Mommy Gio. Thank you for this province. Thank you for our Daddy Maduka and Mommy Maduka in charge. Thank you you have been helping them. You have been supporting them. Lord, be exalted in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for all counselors in Proverbs 64. Thank you for your hands doing wonders through them. Thank you for your spirit resting upon their lives. Lord, be exalted in Jesus' name. We have gathered together, O oh Lord our Father and our God, to refresh, to renew our strength. To reactivate the power and the energy and the gifts. Lord, we pray that you will touch every one of us here today. There shall be revival. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every hope that has been lost, there shall be restoration. Thank you, Father. We give you all praise. Help us today. Don't let us fail you. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please, a better amen. amen. Say it again and again. Amen. Shout hallelujah. Please be seated. God bless you. I want to glorify the Lord God of Israel, who by his mercy, by his grace, we are gathering together today. And that we face the date and the Lord made it possible. It's another miracle on his own. That we need to accept, to, we need to accept the responsibility to praise him for that. Thank God there was no record of any castle loss kidnapped. Or died. So we are all here today healthy. It is only by the mercy of the Lord. And I want to thank my father in the Lord and my mother in the Lord, Dada Mommy Maduka. Thank you for the privilege to release the platform at the altar here today. The oil of the Lord upon you will never run dry. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I want to appreciate Mommy Olajide, the provincial coordinator, 
Now, thank you for the privilege and all the counselors, all the executive members. I really appreciate you. And all the members of counseling departments within this province, I say thank you. You will never be put to shame. This work on your hands will not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. Please say better amen when I'm praying. Thank you for saying amen. This morning, by the grace of God, I will be speaking on child sexual abuse, a silent epidemic. Child sexual abuse, a silent epidemic. That is the the subject matter before every one of us today. And I want to run very fast. And I want to make it so simple so that you as counselors, we really understand the fundamentals of this issue here before us this morning. And at the same time, I want to come out in another way to point to some gray areas when it comes to child sexual abuse that you as a counselor, you need to know because our mission as counselors is to rescue souls, to bring healings, to bring hope, and of course, to save soul. And the Lord will make it possible for us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I want to take my test from 2 Samuel chapter 13, from verse 11 through 20. 2 Samuel chapter 13, from verse 11 through 20. I'm just going to tell you the story there because of our time. And I, because I want to run very fast, you will remember that Amnon and Tamar, they were the same children of David, the great king in Israel. But suddenly, a strange, inordinate sexual feeling for Tamar fell upon Amnon. And that was how manipulation started. That was how the scheme, the scheming came up until he was forced to sleep with Tamar. And the end result has been death, chaos, crisis in the family of King Israel, or King David, the great king of Israel. But I want to pray that the Lord will help us today to understand better in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, our Lord Jesus Christ says something in Matthew chapter 24, verse 12, that in the guilty shall abound, and the love of many shall wax cold. Hence, the fulfillment of this prophecy that in the guilty shall abound has brought about sexual abuse today. So, it is still the performance or the fulfillment of the prophecy that in the guilty, that is sin we multiply in different form. The one we have never had before, we manifest. And they are manifesting today. So, part of it is child sexual abuse. Which has even risen to a higher level today. And that is why, as a counselor, in our province, in our individual church or parishes, 
We need to rise to address this issue. And God will help us. I say God will help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, let me... I've dropped the notes with the media. You get it there. What does it really mean? When we are talking about a child sexual abuse, what does it mean? What is the meaning? How best can we understand this? Aside from the notes put there for us, let me tell you this today, that when we are talking about sexual abuse, it has to do with every activity, every action, every reaction, every event designed or orchestrated to lead a particular child to force, to lead, or to lure a particular child to sexual acts. Are you getting it now? It could be a particular action. It could be an event. Because why an event? I remember last year, there was a birthday party organized for the little, little ones. And right there, they were asking them to be dancing and holding themselves, male to female, female to male, young, young children in a birthday party. Holding themselves, kissing themselves, doing a lot of things there. So it's an event. So it could be an event just to lure them or to expose them to every form of sexual acts. Few years ago, there was a case we tried to resolve. We caught, my wife caught the boy, very small boy, and a particular girl, very small girl too. I think their class is primary one or two, as at that time. My wife caught them. Now he brought them. He reported them to the parents. They wanted to be fighting and all that. I wasn't really around. I was on a mission in another state. Where? I told my wife, go this way. Find out, interview, make an investigation. How did this small boy arrive at this? By the time my wife now called the child of primary two boy, say, it's, she sat him down. How did we come about sex? Guess what the boy said? He said in the night, my mommy we sit down, I'll be watching blue film. And right there we are there too, with my elder sisters. So they are watching it. In other words, that little child has been exposed to sexual art. So, in a quest to practice what he has been watching, he got a particular young girl and they were doing the act where my wife caught them. Suppose my wife didn't catch them. The act will still continue. We now invited the mother and say. Your boy was doing this and this and that. When we queried him, he said that you always watch a uh, blue film. I said, ah, I want to see. I got Most time, oh, when I was watching it, oh, they might have, they, they, most time they were sleeping. I said, ah, they were not sleeping. They pretended to be sleeping. Now, I want to point this to all the castellers here this morning. That even at home, unconsciously, we expose the children. Tell the parents tomorrow that unconsciously too, they expose their children to sexual acts. 
How do I mean by this? Most of us that dress casually at home with small, small bumper, small shorts, and refilling dress because we are at home. Yes. But that small boy is looking at that two things on your side that is, that is dancing as you are walking up and down. And that led me to this story of a particular boy that every time his mother will be dressing right in his presence. Or take this, take the bra, take all the others, and dress up in his presence. And the boy grew up into that pattern. Small, small in the school. He will start tossing the, the chest of the female around her, around him, rather. He advanced. To another level. When he advanced to that level, he was now looking for a particular lady that had that same two things that his mother had. And he started playing with that. From there, he graduated to another thing until he was infected with HIV. And by the time we are trying to trace the history, everything started at home. So please help us to tell the mothers, all the counselors here today, that when you are dressing up at home, when you are at home and you feel like uh, you are at home, you are free, you are just dressing casually, something is pointing to that boy. Something is pointing to that boy, to that girl too. Please take note of this. So, sexual, child sexual abuse, has to do with any activities, any events, any action to lure the little child, to force, to stimulate, to molest the body, and to expose them to sexual acts. Take note of that, please. Take note of that. And the Lord will help us. Now, part of the subject matter before us said, Sexual acts, sex, child sexual abuse, an epidemic. Why is it epidemic today? It is rampant. It is rampant today. It's everywhere. Every institution. You see the record. You see the record. You are hearing it every day. And why it is like this COVID-19, yo? It is like cholera too. But the fear I have, my fear now, is that every institution and every individual pay attention to prevent cholera as an epidemic, to prevent COVID-19 as an epidemic too. But nobody care to prevent child sexual abuse. There was no system put in place. There was no structure put in place. There was no disciplinary system put in place. Everybody will just hear the news and we make noise and that is the end. That is my fear about it. You can see the statistic there. The, the statistics there, three in five girls are sexually abused. Two in six boys are sexually abused. Please, take note of this, sir. Ma. When we are saying child sexual abuse, it doesn't limit to female. Boys also are also molested. Are you getting me, people of God? So, it's not only boys, it's not only girls. It's not only girls. We've had record, records of older men, older men, adults, playing, 
Fourthly, the sexual past of boys, of a young boy. We've had the record. So it's not only the girls that are victims. Boys also are victims. So take note of that. And I remember a particular boy then, whenever his mother is going out, he will drop, it, he will drop him with the, 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 the trusted neighbor. And the Yalagaja we, we put the, the small boy of five years old, put it on, the, on our own chest, telling him to start playing with her breast. It got a time. Anytime the mother now come to say, okay, oh, it is time. Let's go back to our home. The boy will say, no, I'm not going. I would rather stay with this uh, Yalagbaja there. That won't provoke the curiosity of the mother. Why would her own boy be protesting not to go along with him? So they set a trap. They said spies. They were watching. They were watching. Until they discovered that the moment that mother left. Hello? The moment that mother left, the, mo the, the Yaladaja will, will take the boy right inside the room. The spies was to that level until the woman was caught. That that was what he has been, she has been doing. So please take notes. Take notes. Now, let me talk about this. We have told you that I'm going to run very fast to save the time. I want to talk about the agent of child sexual abuse. We have some set of people who are playing active roles. Either the person is an executor or the person is a victim. But all of them, I characterize them as uh, agents of child sexual abuse. Now, number one of these agents are the executors. Those who initiate it. Those who carry out the act of abusing children sexually. That is category one. Now, please take notes. Take notes now. Under this category one, Amen. Under this category one, there are two. We have two sets of them. Number one, we have eternal people. These are the people that carry out sexual abuse to either males or female children. They are not far from the parents. They are a set of people that are living within the family. People you trusted. Well-known people and well-trusted people. It could be the parents. It could be the uncle. All the cousins. All the aunties. They are the one in this category. The in-laws. Our family members are part of that eternal people because they are not far from the parents. They are not far from the parents. They are not far from the parents. And that's why the Bible says in Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. Even Micah chapter 7, verse 5 to 6. Micah chapter 7. 
verses 5 to 6. Matthew chapter 10, verse 36. That your enemies, your best attacker, they are the one from your own household. They are not too far. So that make me to remember a particular brilliant and excellent girl in the house. This family, they invited the younger brother of the husband home to stay with them so that he could write his job, proceed to university, and all that. On trust, the mother would have gone to work. The father also would have gone to work. Leaving the uncle and this girl at home. All the time. But one thing now happened. That suddenly, this girl that is lively and active started withdrawing. Will not stay with the family in the city room. We love to stay indoor. Her academic performance was going down drastically. But thank God that the mother was sensitive enough to take note of the sudden changes revolving around this girl. <sighs> she went to the school to meet with the, the auntie of this girl. Has he reported the case? This and this and this. This girl has been doing at home. We didn't really understand and all that. Then the auntie said, no problem, mommy. Just leave her for me. You can go. And she left. The teacher now invited, invited her. They are just chatting, joking, smile, and all that. What has happened? Why? What happened to you? And all that. The guest said, promise me that you are not going to tell anybody because my uncle said I should not tell anybody. If I tell anybody, I'm going to die. And the artist said, ah, trust me. I'm not going to tell anybody. And you are not going to die either. He said, my daddy's younger brother has been sleeping with me for all this while. And the thing has been affecting me. Because most time, he did it forcefully. He said, promise me, auntie, that you will not tell anybody. Else. The auntie said, no problem. They now, the auntie invited the, the parents, both of them, the daddy and the mommy of the girl, to school. See, this was the case. Are you getting it now? And they shouted. They could not even believe. And all that. Only God knew how the, the supposed uncle, trusted one, knew. He just disappeared. It took time. To bring this girl back alive. So, don't look so far when you are looking for those that are sexually abusing little, little children all around. Don't look too far. Tell parents, as counselors, when you see anybody calling your daughter, my wife, my love, my baby, Imboletico. When you see somebody calling your boy, my husband, my lover, my Olowori, query that person. There is something behind it. So we have them like that. Hello? Now, the second part of people that carry out sexual abuse on children. I categorize them as external people. These are the people who are not related with us by blood, but are well known and well trusted. Do you know that part of them are teachers in the school? The lecturers. You have heard stories of lecturers. A lot of them. Even ministers of the gospel. There was a case that was related with me then of a lady that was invited for deliverance program or deliverance service, so to say. 
Ah, only God knew the spirit that came upon the, okay, spirit of deliverance came upon the minister. And he started ministering. According to the story related with me, the case was brought before me anyway. He started ministering, laying hand on every sensitive part of this lady. But he, I don't know how deeper and bigger the demon in her was until the minister removed all the dresses. He still the deliverance case too. And there was another person that came to me physically to report and said, he says, I beat him The minister started anointing every part of her body. He removed everything. I said, I, I now ask her that, what did you now do? He said, I didn't do anything. I said, you are a fool. Or you are even stupid. Somebody was pouring oil on every part of your body, removing all the dead. As you could not, you could not use your right hand to deliver yourself. So, a lot of things are happening in the church, in the worship centers, in the name of ministry, in the name of counseling, in the name of, <laughs> of praying. Let's pray together. Come for counseling. Come for this. Come for that. So, please watch out. Cancel us. Not every place where they are calling the name of God is holy place. And not everybody calling the name of the Lord is holy man of God. Are you getting it? The nurses, your friends, domestic staff. Ah, we have a lot of stories about that. Domestic staff at home. How they sexually abuse. The little, little one you, you keep with them on trust. We have stories. But I will not permit me. In fact, child life experts are also on the lookout. The counselors, the psychologists, and every one of them. Look out for them. Don't allow your child to go alone with them for them for counseling. Go with them. Tell your, your, your counselors, go with them. Because there was a particular lady then, I was involved to help her out of that situation. She was addicted to sex. She could sleep with any man at any time. And at that time, she was in university. So I said, don't need to the extent that she was expelled. But we intervened. I went to the school. I met with the counselors of the school. We had meeting together. We discussed at full length. In the course of this girl seeking for counselor, counseling rather, the counselor in the school also find that his own way into the, into, the life of, into the life of this girl. So, don't just say somebody is a pastor, somebody is a minister, somebody is a teacher, is a lecturer that you trust. Watch out. Watch out. And the Lord will keep on exposing them. Say a better amen. amen. Now, please, I'm going to take time here about the victim. And I want you to pay attention because this is where your work, your calling, your duty, your responsibility, and your ministry as a counselor lies. Because the victim is our focus here now. Even though the executor also is part of our responsibility. God, many of them need counseling. But let's focus on the, the victim now. The victim here, of course, are these innocent children from days old, a day old. We've had reports of a 70-year-old Baba fondling the... <laughs> The private part of a month old baby. We've had record of adults sleeping with two months old baby. So what are we talking about here? So the victim right from the day old was your
Now, as a counselor, please take notes now. How will you know that somebody is a victim of sexual abuse? This is where we are going now. The symptoms. The symptoms. I want to highlight this for you. So that in your church, in your parishes, in your areas, in your province, even in your neighborhood, you'll be able to move straight into action. The movement. Number one is mental changes. There's going to be drastic, negative changes. And part of these changes is mental changes. What does that one apply? A brilliant child, very intelligent child before, we start going down. The rate of thinking, the performances, we start going down. We start going down. We not concentrate again. We not be able to think right. And part of it is loss of memory. Short loss of memory. He or she will not remember something on time. If I tell him A, he will be answering B. He will be telling you B. If I tell him go, he will be saying come. Then start to note that something is wrong. And it's getting wrong. Number two changes that we serve as a symptom is spiritual changes. A child that has been active in things of God. A child that is lively in things of God before, we suddenly lose interest. The same thing with social changes. Social changes. He or she will not feel freely to relate with people. You see him or her withdrawing. When the family are gathered together in the city room for to relax, he or she will prefer to stay alone in the room. Because as we draw, that is part of the symptom. Then you will see the attitudinal changes. Negative reaction to things. Anger. Bitterness. That is in the form of emotional changes now. Anger. Easily provoked. Then you begin to watch that something is wrong somewhere. A child that is happy with everybody, a child that is free with everybody, a child that is relating with everybody before, but suddenly is now getting angry at a very slight thing, then you will need to wash out. You will need to wash out. Another part of the symptom is moral changes. Because part of the damaging effects of Child sexual abuse is moral changes. The child will always be addicted to every form of immoral act, if not rescued on time. So you will see him or her wanting somebody to be fondling him or her. He or she will always aspiring to see somebody that will be caressing him or her. Then take notes. Please, take notes. But if there's anybody, any child in our parishes and our province that has been a victim, the Lord will rescue them. I say God will rescue them. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's talk about the damaging effects of Child sexual abuse. I'm going to run through that one. I'm, going, I'm not going to lay much emphasis on that. The damaging effects. Number one is emotional damage. That child will be full of bitterness. That child will be full of anger. We always be annoyed with everything and everybody around him or her. We not feel happy. That is emotional damage. If others are laughing, if others are smiling, if others are happy, he, will, he, will, he or she will not feel happy. He or she will not laugh. There's nothing that will move him or her. Take note of that. 
Another one is sexual damage. This time around, the child, two things will happen. Please look here. The child will either hate sex completely with passion or excessively love sex. That is why in marriage, those who are married, who are married, those who have been a victim before, completely they will hate sex in marriage. They won't like their husband to touch them. If not for the sake of giving birth, they will not have sex. We have somebody like that before. If it is now, we are still helping her. She just loves sex. And the moment she finished and concluded having a child, children like this, three of them like this, what happened? She said, oh, glory to the Lord. Amen? Say, glory to the Lord. The end of sex has come now. So there's going to be a sexual change. It's either he or she hates with passion or excessively like sex. To the extent that the husband, he, will always, he or she will always be looking for her past. If the spouse fails to meet up, then he or she will be looking for her past. We have had cases like that, sir. The wife was looking for her past. He said, my husband could not, could not do it very well. My husband is not good in bed. So I'm going to look for her past. So she was looking for her past. Because the sexual, her sexual life in the beginning has been damaged. So it's either they excessively love or passionately hate sex. Do you understand? Number three, physical damage. Here are the injuries they, have, they, they inflicted on them. Because most time it is by force. Can you imagine an old man of 40 or 50 of 60 years sleeping with 16, 15, 14, even 10 years old girl? So that would be, does she have the body to carry that kind of thing? That's going to be an injury. And that child may not be able to work very well again if care is not taken. Health issues, there could be infections, transfer to him, to him or to her. Spiritual damage. This one, the light of Christ that have been burning, the fire for things of God that have been burning in him or her before, this kind of abuse will finish everything. So please, counsel us, take notes. It's a serious work here for us to do. We've talked about mental damage before. She, he or she will not be able to think straight, to think right again. His thinking will be for a, every time he's taking or are thinking is going to be negative. He will not be able to think right. He will not be, she will not be able to think straight. And the Lord will help us. I say the Lord will help us. Now, I've said this one before, but for the sake of emphasis, I want to say it again. Places for sexually child abuse, where it can happen. I've said it before. Number one, homes. At home. At home, oh, please take notes. Counselors, tell parents, your counselors, at home. I have this online platform. I call it Youth and Love Affairs. I don't teach there. What I always do is I ask the youth to ask questions. Ask questions about love, about sex, about romance, about relationship. Now, let me tell you this. <laughs> that was last month, October. Somebody test me with this question that she and her elder brother has been sleeping together, having sex at home. 
that they have been so close and addicted to each other that they didn't even want to leave each other again. That what, what is he going to do? That was the question put before me. It's a very big question. When you see Edmund Taburo, But I tell you this one that will shock you. And that's why ministers need to fight for their home. Ministers, counselors, when you are defending others, defend your home. There was these senior pastors. They are busy doing the work of God with the wife and the husband. The two children they have, the only two children they have, a boy and a girl, they have been sleeping with each other at home. Something now happens. Please pay attention now. I'm about to round up. Something now happened. The lady was sick. He was taken to the hospital. It was then they realized that he had been conceived. Who impregnates you? He said, my brother. He said, that's not the first time that they have been having a series of abortion. Yes, at home. And they are senior pastors. Mommy pastor and daddy pastor. The only two children they have. They have been having a series of abortion before this one comes. They don't say, what are we going? What are they going to do and all that? This one, but by yet months, say they cannot abort this one again. They sent the lady to Port Harcourt to go and stay there. The boy was here in Lagos with the parents. But something happened. The lady had miscarriage over there. But she committed suicide. On hearing the news at home, the boy also committed suicide because her lover has died. So check. If you see them playing too much together, if you see them fondling each other too much, shout. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's me and my brother, me and my sister, me and my brother in the room. Why others in the city room? Question them. Don't wait for the bomb to explode. Look for a way to detonate it. Or oh, yes, Apale Macau. That brought permanent blemish and stain upon the ministry of that daddy and mommy. And I pray with all the ministers here today, as we are saving souls out there, host of air fire will not evade our home. In the name of Jesus Christ. So please, at home, it's happening at home. Father is sleeping with daughter. Eh? Mother is sleeping with her own son. Yes. We have cases like that. Ah. If I begin to tell you story here, you will not believe. You will think it's a fabricated one. But things are happening here. We only use the clothes and Christian activities to cover up. So check home when you see them sleeping, doing everything together. I remember a particular time, this child, the, the couple had just two, a boy and a girl. They allow them to be, they are so free to each other that they will go to the bedroom together and bed. And they were growing. I just called the mother and said, why did you start this madness? He said, David, they are just little children. I said, ah! This one that has, that has grown tall, almost taller than you, is a, young, is a little shit child. I said, Stop it! So I put my for up in the bedroom. Please don't allow that kind of closeness. Tell parents, tell your counselors, don't let them permit that kind of closeness in among their children. The Lord will help us. Worship centers. It happens there. We have had a series of ministers raping their choirs, impregnating choirs, playing on their intelligence. 
so as to sleep with them. At schools. Now, let me say this for you. Take note of consulting rooms. Hello? Where did I say now? Uh, doctor's room. Doctor's office. Teacher's office. Minister's office. All this, all that. Consulting room. Take note. Don't go alone. Don't allow your counselor to go alone. And God will help us. I say God will help us. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me conclude by how to handle it, how to handle child sexual abuse as counselors. We have two cases here. How to handle the executors and how to handle the victim. But let me quickly go to the executor. How do you handle the person who is molesting, who is abusing little children all around? Number one, invite the agents. Invite him or her. I'm still coming back to that though because we have a lot of them that are violent. The moment they secretly, they turn it, they become violent in order to cover up. Don't take it lightly with them. I'm a sort of world, they start fighting, they start shouting, they start bragging, they start doing all sorts of things just to terrify us, just to intimidate us and to intimidate this. Just sleep quiet. But I will be talking about them. We have them like that. They will turn it to another thing. So please take notes. Take note of that. Invite him or her for interrogation. But while you are interrogating him or her, make sure you are recording it. Because in the long process, they may deny everything they have confessed. Do you understand, sir? They may deny it. In fact, they will even deny it. But record everything. That is for the for the executor. Number two things there, cancel the agents, if they need be. Because many of them become violent the moment you cast them. Cancel him or her. Number three there, report to law enforcement agents. Go and report him or her. No one of the problems we are having today, why this issue become persistent, daddy, is because people try to protect the image or the name or the social status of that person. Ah, Hatingbo, Hatingbo. They will not hear. They must not hear that it's my child. They must not hear that it is it is like that that did it. So they try to cover it up. And that's why the thing is increasing and expanding today. Don't cover it up. What do you do to the victim? Please. You are going to provide every necessary support. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 to 3. What you are going to do here? Number one, provide spiritual support. Prayer. Support him or her with prayer. Read the word of God to him or her. Proclaim, declare, decree the word of God upon him or her. Number two, Medical support. Provide the, the, post, the victim. Let him or her go for hospital, to hospital for medical checkup. Let him or her do tests to discover the, the medical damages that could have happened. Number three, provide moral support. What do you do about that? Become his or her friend. Become friendly with him or her. Don't attack him or her. You know, many things we do is that we blame them. Don't blame. Don't accuse. Don't condemn. Don't pass any judgment in a time like this. They don't need it as at as that, as that, as that time. All they need now is to be friendly with them. Become so close to them. To build their moral. Number three, social support. What do that, does that one mean? Try to relate well. Don't be, become bitter. You know, many things, one of the societal evil today is that the moment we know that this child has been sexually abused, we become the enemy. We put a label, we put a symbol upon him or her. We will not try to relate with him. No, don't do that. Relate well. Relate well. Then the last one there you can do. As counselors, please. Let us start what we call social crusade or campaign. What does that one mean? Sexual purity. 
Go to secondary schools. Go to primary schools. Go to higher institution. Go and be campaigning there. It is possible. Set up a platform. Enlighten them. Educate and inform them. Let them know that they need to, to, to survive and to escape. And the Lord will help us. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. As counselors in the fire of God, we are to rise to our calling to duty and responsibility. To bring healings and hope to the victims and also to bring sexual purity and sanity into our society. And the Lord will help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Shall we rise to our feet, please? Please, let's rise to our feet. One prayer point. And I will pray with us. Amen. Are you blessed? Do you drive any value? Did you get any value for why you are here? Very good. You are going to raise your right hand unto the Lord. This is one of the diseases in the world today. The Father make me an agent of healing. Agent of what? Please say it again. Amen. Say, Father. Father. Somebody is not even talking at all. Father. Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Make me agent of healing. In a time like this, open your mouth and pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Make me an agent of healings. In a time like this, heal it to the victims, heal it to the, to the, to the, to the agents. Pray. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Father, we pray together today as counselors. Oh, Lord God, our Father, we pray. Power and every supernatural resources we need to make us agents of healing in a time like this. Release unto us in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us to fulfill this ministry. Give us the grace not to fail you. Give us the grace not to fail our generations. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. You are blessed. Thanks so much. Hallelujah. Thank you, Dr. Kayode Odesoya. The Lord bless you and bless your ministry in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. At this point, I'd like to recognize the presence of our Father, the pastor in charge of Lagos Province 64, Pastor Magnus Maduka. Shall we give him a round of applause? Daddy, you're welcome. God bless you. We also have in our midst this morning the National Coordinator for Counselors, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, and also Dublin as the pastor in charge of Lagos Province 53. Please join me to welcome Pastor and Pastor Mrs. B.A. Ajayoba. You're welcome, sir. You're welcome, ma. God bless you. We also have in our midst Pastor Solomon Egbele, the regional coordinator for Region 31. God bless you, sir. You're welcome. Also in the house this morning is Pastor Mrs. Musmola Adeniyi, regional, Adeniji, regional coordinator, Region 11. You're welcome, ma. God bless you. We also have, also from Region 31, Lagos Province 37, Pastor Ekundayo Fagbola. You're welcome to our midst. God bless you. Also in the house this morning, representing uh, the APICP CSR LP 64, that's the Pastor Akin John. Uh, representing him this morning is Pastor William Ademola. God bless you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> Hallelujah. Without much ado, I'd like to invite to the microphone our pastor in charge of Lagos Province 64, Pastor Magnus Maduka, for his keynote address. That you're welcome, sir. Praise the Lord. God bless you all.
My apologies for coming late. No thanks to the tankers on the road. I lost one and a half hours coming to this place. Shall be well with you all in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Eternal Rock of Ages, we are grateful to be born again. Thank you that the blood of Jesus saved us from every sin. We are redeemed from evil. We are redeemed from the causes. And we are redeemed into blessings. And your word says, the redeemed of the Lord should say so. So with our mouth, we declare that we are redeemed from the evil of the time in the name of Jesus. And we are grateful for this responsibility of counseling. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by your spirit that we counsel. And we trust that your spirit will be our wisdom in Jesus' name. The Lord Jesus has been given to us as wisdom, righteousness, sanctification, and redemption. And these we manifest in our lives in Jesus' name. In the assignments that you have blessed us with, we trust you that your wisdom will avail for us in Jesus' name. The theme of this congress or conference is counseling unto greater heights. None of us will miss the mark in Jesus' name. Your grace will abound unto us and we shall deliver what you have sent us to do. In Jesus' mighty name, we prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. Um, I just want to speak for about 10 minutes and take my seat because we have experts on counseling seated here. We trust God that they will do a great job like what I just uh, listened to. Wonderful message. Let's put our hands together again for that, for that delivery, that powerful delivery. Shall be well with you all in Jesus' name. The very popular scripture that we have for uh, counseling, very popular, is Proverbs 11, verse 14. Proverbs 11, verse 14. If they can display it for us, the Bible says there, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. And I can count more than two or three of you here that are counselors. So there is a multitude of counselors already. Shout hallelujah. And we believe God that we will live up to our name and we live up to our appellation in the name of Jesus. We will be counseling from the spirit of God, not from the flesh in Jesus' name. So you are expecting a great time here and the Lord will see to it that when we are leaving this place, we are much better than the way we came in in Jesus' name. Children don't nurse children. Children cannot nurse children. Therefore, the counselor should be well-groomed. And I believe God, that's why this program is put together. Children cannot successfully nurse children. And if it's a joke, or if you, you, don't, you don't believe me, when you leave this place, just carry a little baby, and then give another child that is a little bit older than that baby to carry. That baby will start crying. Because the baby knows that he or she will land on the ground without, uh, without any reversing it. It just be like somebody who jumps off the balcony of a story building. His commitment to landing on the floor is irrevocable. So when you carry a little baby and give to another little child to carry, the child will start crying. You are supposed to be growing as counselors. So this training is an input. The mission is making into your life, into your growth. So that when you are counseling, you are not counseling like an idiot. You are not counseling like a numbskull. You'll be counseling from experience. Like we have heard from the last presenter, we are able to grow by by hearing what people have gone through in their experience. And by the way, as long as you are under grace, the power of God will order your family in Jesus' name. Amen. Most of the examples that we have had are for people who may be playing church. It doesn't matter the titles they carry. 
senior PP, junior PP, middle PP, praise God. The title you carry is irrelevant. The devil is not intimidated by the titles we carry. What, what, what he respects is that you know what you are doing. Is that you know the spirit of God that lives inside you. So let's not get distracted by church activities. Too much of them can dry you up spiritually. Too much of them can dry you up spiritually. And then the church will be growing you in its hierarchy, naturally. Meanwhile, your home is upside down. So may you counsel yourself. Amen. And may the power of God speak in your family. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Shall be well with you. It says where there are multitude of counselors, there will be safety. May safety operate around you in Jesus' name. Amen. So you don't finish looking after other people's uh, vineyard and foxes invade your own. God has promised to bless you in Christ Jesus. In Psalm 3 verse 8, the Bible says that we are under blessing. And it says, Selah. Selah means take note. Selah means pause and think about this. You are under blessing. And the blessing of God will, will radiate in your families, in your businesses, and in your ministries. In the name of Jesus. So we have experts in the house, like we have just had a presentation. There's no point belaboring the matter. They will do a, a lot of justice to the topic at hand. And we all leave this place aiming for the higher and the highest in the name of Jesus. It will not just be another time of wearing uniform. It will be a time of adding value to our ministries, to our, to our lives, in the name of Jesus. And one of the things I must comment on, comment on from the last speaker is that it's a pity I'm speaking after him. I should have spoken before him. Is that you don't judge anybody. In this church, we make a big deal out of the, the sentence that there is therefore no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. When you judge anybody who has a sexual perversion or a sexual uh, challenge, you worsen that person's case. Christ will redeem us from every challenge in Jesus' name. We are talking about sexual abuse. There are other abuses. There are other mess-ups. And when they bring these things to you as a counselor, please Treat them with love. Make your corrections in love. And follow up on them. Don't label them like we have just heard. Don't castigate them. Because they are in that. Perhaps you have other faults of your own too. That you are struggling with. But remember, Christ has redeemed us from the cause of the law. He has been made a cause, of, uh, a cause for us. Shout hallelujah. Don't sit in judgment over people because you are counseling them. And when they bring a question to you, you are not an encyclopedia. When they bring you a question, if you don't have an answer, book an appointment with them to go and find the answer and come and give them the answer. Don't kandahar their head. That how can I say I don't have an answer? When you know that you don't have an answer. Take, uh, take an excuse from him that you go and find out and come and tell the person the truth. So counseling is not because you have all the answers. Counseling is because you are teachable. You are learning from conferences like this. You are learning from uh, study. You are learning from life's experience to be a blessing to others. Not because you know everything. So I believe God that by the time we are done with this conference today, we all leave this place much better than the way we came. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. Hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord. Uh, the theme of our 2021 convention is counseling unto higher heights. And to do justice to that theme this morning, I'd like to invite to the microphone the national coordinator Counselors Group, and also the PICPL P53, Pastor Benjamin Ajayoba.
If you are clapping for this small boy, it's too much. But if you are clapping for the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the ending, the wonderful Counselor, the mighty God, the Prince of Peace, the Lord of Glory. Can we celebrate the King of Kings in the house? Let's celebrate him. Let's celebrate him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I'm so excited in the house. If you are happy to be in the house, shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, your masquerade is dancing well, right? You are no masquerade. You are children of God. The others will say when the masquerade is dancing well, you will be excited. I'm so happy to come here and to be in your midst this morning. And I want to appreciate the grace of God in the life of our father in the house, the PICP of this wonderful province. Pastor Magnus Maduka. Thank you so very much. Hallelujah. The, our pastor is saying that he's not talking about counseling, but he has given out at least four or three or four points that I have taken. Hallelujah. That is very, very germane to counseling process. For example, you are the agent of safety. Amen. That's number one. Number two, cancel in love. You don't condemn people. And number three, don't handle the case that is beyond your knowledge. Make referrals. When they bring somebody to a doctor, a surgery case, they bring it to a gynecologist, will he be able to handle it? He will make referrals. He will make references. Praise the Lord. Let's put our hands together for our pastor in the house. Hallelujah. Amen. I want also to celebrate the people that are put this program together, the executive of this wonderful counseling department, this province. Uh, I want to celebrate our mother, Mami Olajide, and the rest of them. Uh, I want to greet all the counselors from all over the place, the regional coordinator, Region 31, Pastor Egbele, yeah, and all the people that come from Region 31. Oh, one of our sisters is from our province too. Mommy Agba is in the house. You're welcome. Hallelujah. And all the other people that I cannot mention their name, Mommy Adeni Jizia. Glory be to God. Amen. We are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son. With the Son, we are children of the kingdom. We are family. We are one. We are heirs, we are heirs of the Father. We are joint heirs with the Son, with the Son. We are children. We are family. We are one. Thank you, Father Lord. King of glory, we worship you. We give you praise, we give you honor. Thank you, Father, for your faithfulness. Lord Almighty, even when we are unfaithful, you remain faithful still. Thank you for your mercies. By your mercies, we are not consumed. Several were the attempt of the enemy to swallow us up before now. But your mercy spared us. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for your choice for us as counselors. Many are out there. You didn't choose them. You chose us. You said in your word, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you to go forth and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatsoever ye shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. 
Thank you, Father, for choosing us. Take all the praise of God in Jesus' name. We want to thank you, O Lord Almighty Father, for the counseling department in RCCG Lagos from 64. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful conference that you have made them to, be, to organize for this time. At this time, we thank you for the theme of this conference. Counseling on to higher heights. Thank you, Father, because you are taking them to higher heights. Thank you, Father, because this is the appointed time. Lord, take all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to thank you, Fellowship of the Province. Thank you, Lord Almighty God, for all you have done for this province. Lord, take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for the speaker that has spoken before us. Thank you for the impartation. Lord, thank you for the hearers. Thank you because we are not just going to be the hearers alone, we'll be the doers. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. This morning, speak your word through us. Both the speaker and the hearer, we are ignorant of your word. Father, grant us the wisdom to understand your word and to speak your word. At the end of the day, let your name be glorified. Let the devil again be put to shame. And all of your children that can say a good amen, let them be blessed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise Jesus. Wave to your friend and say, friend, you're welcome. The Lord will speak expressly to you today. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may be sitting in the presence of God. Once again, we thank God for giving us this opportunity to be here at this time. And again, we thank the leadership of this province. The Almighty God will honor you, sir. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Canceling unto higher heights. Before I continue, I want to also tender my reserve apology for the lateness. Uh, we are coming from a program to this place. And of course, we are leaving from this place to another program. When mommy told us that you have shifted your program till, to 13th instead of 28th. Because today is very, very choky for me. So I just told her, well, I will try and squeeze in myself. So it's not actually convenient that I will be here this morning. But I give God, glory to, to God in the highest. Praise the Lord. Amen. Canceling unto higher heights. While I was trying to prepare this message, I was looking through the scriptures, and the Lord opened my eyes to see Job 26. Job 26, uh, there are some vital questions there that Job has. Job 26, I read from verse 1 to 4. But Job answered and said, How hast thou helped him that is without power? How savest thou the arm that had no strength? How hast thou cancelled him that had no wisdom? How hast thou plentifully declared the thing as it is? Declare the counsel as it is. To whom hast thou uttered words? And whose spirit came from thee? Whose spirit? Like our pastor said earlier on, we cancel through the spirit of God so that that cancer will not be from the flesh. Job is asking this question. If you want to be effective in your counseling process, how can you help somebody without power? How can you save somebody who has no strength? And how can you counsel him that has no wisdom? How can you declare the counsel as it is? If you can answer all these questions in the affirmative, can produce answers to them, then you'll be able to cancel and take your counseling to a higher level. We all know levels. Talking about height is just the size of or the length between the bottom and the top, the lower level and the top level. But then talking about height is more than the distance between the bottom and the top. 
level, when we're talking about height, height here is when you say that you are reaching a height of something. You are reaching the height of something. It means that you are getting to the utmost part of that thing. It means that you are getting to the most successful part of that thing. It means that you are getting to the most powerful and the most intense part of that thing. So when we are talking about counseling to the higher height, higher height now is a level that is beyond the level you are now. Right? It goes higher. And counseling, you know the process of counseling. The counseling just giving advice to people that need advice. Counseling is a process of helping people to come out of their trouble and their problem, their emotional, psychological, interpersonal problem. And just like we had the other time, that when you have counselors in the house, people are saved from their troubles. Where there's no counsel, people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So, agent of safety, agent of care, people to help others, counselors, helping some people that need help, who, which the former, I mean, the previous speaker has told us, the client or the counselee. And God has given us this assignment because he knows that counseling is part of life. Right from the beginning of time, the almighty God, the first counselor, he counseled man. In the Garden of Eden, you remember the case when God called man, this is how you are going to live your life, to enjoy your life. This tree, eat out of them. This one, don't eat out of them. The day you do that, you are in trouble. But then, we know that the devil is around the corner to bring all kind of counsel to the mind of people. And that's the reason why we need to establish our ministry as Christian counselors. Counseling will be any form. Career counseling, general counseling, you know, marital counseling and all that. But then, we are most particularly concerned about the Christian counseling. Christian counseling has been defined by the Association of Biblical Counselors says that Christian counseling seeks to carefully discover those areas in which a Christian may be disobedient to the principles and the commands of scriptures and to help that fellow to learn how to lovingly submit to God's will. So we are particularly concerned with Christian counseling. And of course, the Christian counselor approaches the process of counseling through the lens of the Bible, he uses the Bible, the Word of God. And of course, it has a main objective to help client or counselee to achieve a better understanding of himself or herself and the better understanding of his maker, the Almighty God. And of course, by the convention of the Holy Spirit. So, the goal of counseling is to, in Christian counseling, is to bring somebody to the knowledge of Christ and, of course, let him understand how he can apply the word of God to his life to be able to make it in life. And, of course, I believe we have been involved in various aspects and just like our pastor has told us, we need to learn more. A child cannot nurture a child. 
we need to know more. If you don't teach them, you don't blame them. This seminar, right, will equip us to be able to cancel even some of our young, young counselors so that they can be able to cancel our right. And I pray before we leave here, the Almighty God will have equipped us powerfully that will cancel to the higher level in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. And again, it is very, very expedient that if you want to cancel effectively, you must also be canceled yourself. Because you can't give what you don't have to others. You must be canceled. I've always been telling you this. For you to cancel right, you must be canceled. This morning, because of my time, we want to just run through the equipment that we need to cancel. Canceling should go beyond the routine form of canceling that we are known to, that we are used to. We should take canceling to a higher height, to a higher dimension. You know, the paradigm of canceling should shift. It should shift beyond the normal level that you know. In order to be able to do that, like I said, I'm talking about higher heights, taking the point, the most powerful point of a particular project, endeavor, or a process. And, of course, we have 10 equipment that we have to equip ourselves with. There are so many others, but then I just pen down 10 here for us to take note of this morning. Number one of them is salvation. Genuine salvation. Genuine what? The seven sons of Sceva, they wanted to attend to cancel. But they didn't have what it takes to cancel. But then... When they attempted it, demons dealt with them. He said, we don't know you. What is, the, what is the authority that you use to drive us out? Jesus we know. Paul we know. What about you? You don't have the equipment. You need to be genuinely born again. There are quite a number of people today in the Christendom that claim to be born again, but then they are not born again. They are not born again. The Bible says, by their fruit we shall do what? Shall know them. Counselor should manifest the fruits of a believer. Right? It's not just by word of mouth, but it should show in your life. It should show in your life. You must manifest it. The Bible says, if any man is in Christ, a new creature. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. <laughs> you call your, yourself a counselor. You still manifest the spirit of anger, spirit of pride, spirit of intolerance. Then what do you need to counsel? Somebody was talking and said, and I heard him. He said, well, let us put salvation aside. Let's put our salvation aside. I am, when I am myself, I give it to you exactly as I am. I give it to you. At another instance, one thing happened between the head usher in one of the parishes I pastored some years ago. The head usher and one of the ministers the other chair happened to be a woman. She's a deaconess. The other man is a deaconess. And he was shouting on, on, on Sunday morning. I was shouting, what's, what's happening there? When they brought them to us, the man was saying that, uh, I just consider that she's married. I will have slapped her. If not that she has married. That is me. I am a typical so-so-so person from so-so-so state. I will mention the stage. Amen. Amen to Jesus Christ. 
You want me to mention it? I know some of them are from that stage. Amen. He says, sir, he was still declaring it before my presence. He says, sir, let's put Jesus aside. Let's put salvation aside. You can't insult me. Many of us are like that. And when people see you, they say, look at our counselor. The question is, are you genuinely, are you truly born again? Because if you are not born again, forget the ministry of Christian counseling. It's very, very important. You can't give what you don't have to somebody. You are talking about bringing in souls into the kingdom of God, saving souls, preaching to people in order to save them. But then you yourself, you are not saved. Let us check it out. If that is the only message you hear this morning, I'm comfortable. And I'm satisfied. The question is, counselors, are you truly born again? Counselors that are beating themselves in the, in the house. Husband slapping, slapping the wife. Right? There's a pastor. I had a pastor to say, well, my wife talks too much. I just gave her a backhand. What are we canceling? Number two, intimacy with God. You have to have a relationship with God, close relationship. You have to be holy. Both of the same feather flock together. You have to, like, like the elders will say, when the leaf stays much more long with the soap, it will become like soap. First Peter 1 Peter 1.16 As it is written, Be thou holy as I am holy. Are you holy? Cancel us fornicating. Cancel us committing adultery. What then can you cancel with? You don't have the audacity to cancel. You need to abide with Jesus Christ. John 15, the Lord Jesus Christ said, I am the true vine. My, my father is the husband man. Every brand that bringeth forth no fruit, my father take it away. And the one that bringeth fruit, he purges so that I can bring forth more fruit. He said in verse 5 of that John 15, he said, For without me, ye can do nothing. Without him, we can do nothing. We can do nothing. And we have to live the life, our life after his own life. He was here in the ministry. No occasion, Jesus, our Lord Jesus Christ, no occasion of any fault was found in him. In the way we talk, let our talk, let our speech be seasoned with salt. Oh, Apostle Paul was just telling them in Colossians 3, 8. Colossians 3, 8. Can you project it? I want us to read it together. Colossians 3, 8. He said, in your, okay, but ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, feel the communication out of your mouth. God will help us in Jesus' name. Number three, wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. As a matter of fact, there are three forms of wisdom. Three kinds, I mean, four kinds of wisdom. The first one is hardly wisdom. The second one is sensual wisdom, intellectual wisdom, devilish wisdom. The third one, the fourth one, is the wisdom that cometh from above. According to James 3, 15 to 17. James 3, 15 to 17. Now, you see, a lot of people these days, they, they virtually turn everything to wisdom. When they have cheated on somebody, they say, oh, it's wisdom. When they have lied against someone, oh, I have to get out, my, out of that situation. That's wisdom. 